evening and welcome to the Tuesday, May 24, 2022 uh, Tingsboro School Committee meeting. Uh, I am Dr. Flanagan, Superintendent of Schools, calling this meeting to order. This is our annual reorganization meeting. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please rise for a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we go into uh, introductions, I would also ask everyone to please take a moment of reflection uh, to recognize the 14 souls and families, uh, 15 souls and families that were, that were lost today in Uvalde, Texas. Thank you. This time we get introductions down to my left. Hi, Nate Marino, next year's student representative. Grace Jambly, student representative. Justine Puma. Jeff Bowe. Good evening, Mark Branco, assistant superintendent. Becky Stanton. Anthony Tenorel. Daniela Thanis. Robert Mullen. Joe Messina, school business administrator. Thank you. So at this time, we'll move to item two, election of chair. At uh, this time, I'll seek a nomination for the school committee chair. If more than one nominee is forthcoming, the nominee who receives the greatest number of votes will serve as the chair. In the event of a tie, the process will repeat itself until a chair is elected. Do we have a nomination? I'd like to nominate um, Ms. Rebecca Stanton as chair of our committee again for this year, please. We have a nomination for Mr. Mullen. Is there a second? I will second that. Mr. Tenorello seconds it. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That's unanimous. Six zero zero. Madam Chair, it's yours. Thank you, everybody. Uh, moving on to item two B is the election of the vice chair. I'll seek. Uh, I'll request um, any nominations for the vice chair, and you know the same rules apply if there are more than one nomination. I'd like to nominate Mr. Tony Tinarella as vice chair, please. Is there a second? A second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 0 0. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you, everyone. Um, moving on to 2B, the election of the recording secretary. Uh, I'll seek any nominations for the, or I'll request any nominations for the recording secretary. Madam Chair, I will nominate Ryan McMahon this evening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Is there a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 600. Congratulations to Ryan, <laughs> and we'll make sure that we notify him of that. Tough being late. Oh, boy. <laughs> and we'll move on to the review of the open meeting law. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in the folder tonight is the annual information I would provide to the, each committee member. It's a good refresher for those. I know Danielle is new, um, so it's good information to have. We're obligated to provide this each and every year. Uh, Danielle is a new committee member, has a, a document that she needs to fill out and get back to us, but it is uh, information about the open meeting law. It's information about executive session, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. It talks about the role of the school committee. So those are three uh, standard uh, fair items that we have in the drive each and every uh, new meeting or new election cycle. Um, and then also the executive session, which would be item 2E. Uh, the role of the school committee, item 2F. Um, that's also in the drive. And then- It is. Um, the next is 2G. Sorry, I lost my place there. Um, <laughs> to discuss the subcommittee meetings. Dr. Flanagan? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. As you know, we have uh, several standing subcommittees of the school committee. Uh, and each year, I think that the process seems to work pretty well. What I, and I recommend that we do it again. What I'll do is I will send out an email to all committee members <coughs> with a brief description of each subcommittee. You can find which subcommittee piques your interest a little bit and give me your top two or three choices. I will look at what that comes uh, out to be and we'll assign committees accordingly. That'll come back to the full committee in June for uh, an official vote. And Dr. Flanagan, just from a um, negotiation standpoint, um, are there any teacher negotiations this year? There are no teacher negotiations this year, okay. but we do have cl two collective bargaining units that we are negotiating with this year, the custodians and um, admin assistants. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, moving on to approval of minutes. I will seek a motion to approve the April 12, 2022 policy subcommittee meeting minutes. 
in the April 26, 2022 school committee meeting minutes. So moved. Is Seconded. There, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Probably abstain. Okay, one abstention. So we have um, 501 for the approval of minutes. Um, citizen time, we have no citizens here tonight. Um, correspondence, there's none at this time, Dr. Plankton? at this time. Okay. And moving on to personnel. So we have a notification for a request for maternity leave from Danielle Van Gelder, um, TMS school counselor for October 2022. Congratulations, Danielle. And notification of resignations of Melanie Chandonet, a board certified behavior analyst, Allie Regan, THS special educator, special education teacher, Ryan Vigin, TES paraprofessional. <coughs> Good luck to all of you. And then moving on to staff attaining professional status for fiscal 23 is Catherine Cardinal, Thomas, Timothy Doust, Marla Fisher, Danielle Morin, Alexandria Panagiotakis, Jamie Silva, Stephen Stanley, and Hannah Stowens. Congratulations. Next is the notification of new hires for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, we have Bethany Shudo, a district-wide uh, school social worker. Nicole Stetson, grade six through 12 school psychologist. Cassidy Tiros, TES school counselor. And Daniel Costigan, did I say that right? Correct. Uh, THS special uh, social studies. And staff renewals with non-professional status. We have Rachel Collins, Kat Cooney, Jenna Durkin, Hannah <coughs> Falwitz, Susan Gadbin, Carrie Jones, Kayla O'Shea, Brock Riley, Jason Stewart, Jacqueline Tenerella, Samantha Warm, and Barbara Zinnerman. Uh, moving on to share the success. This is the last one for you, Grace. Yes, Madam Chair, you might have noticed a new face at the table as well. So Grace will give us the share of the success update and then she'll introduce Nate Marino who will talk a little bit about the process and how he became the student representative this year. Great. So TMS thanks the school committee for supporting the school building committee's work to get the project approved by the community. MCAS ended today, only makeup tests remain for some students who are absent. Students did an excellent job as they give their best effort through many testing sessions. TMS also had a very successful spring season in sports and extracurriculars, including the return of the Knowledge Bowl. They are hosting a step-up day for 5th to 7th graders on June 9th and a field day on June 10th, which will include spike ball, kickball, water games. And the 8th grade end-of-year events are going to include the end-of-year dance, Cape and Whale Watch, and a moving on ceremony on Pierce Field. At THS, 10th graders completed the MCA Math MCAS last week, and the 9th graders are be taking the Biology MCAS uh, June 7th and 8th. Congratulations to the theater members Natalie and Lila on receiving Tammy Award no nominations for their performance in The Lightning Thief. Emma Hogan and Emma Angelo recently attended the Massachusetts Women in Sports Day at Faneuil Hall. The Academic Excellence Award Ceremony took place earlier this month, recognizing 22 members from the class of 2022 that earned a GPA of 3.75 or higher during their high school career. And graduation is going to take place on June 3rd at 7 p.m. Senior Awards Nice is going to be later tonight, and prom is on Thursday, and our pre-prom will be held at 5.30 p.m. And then THS seniors also thank everyone who supported the Tingsboro Scholarship Trust. And this is my replacement, Nate. Hi, I'm Nate. <laughs> um, I'm a junior right now at Tingsboro High School. I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to be here tonight, and I'm excited to be here. Um, so just to walk you through the process of how you'd um, be nominated for student representative, um, first off, it started off with a Google form. Uh, it was sent out to all members of the junior class, and it was an open-ended question just asking who you thought would be best fit to be student representative. Um, that, those results narrowed it down to three people, I believe, and um, each of us was asked to write an essay about why we thought we would be best fit for student representative. That was then sent out to some administrators and staff in Tingsboro High School, and then um, whichever essay was voted on as the best or, why, or the best fit they thought um, was nominated to be student representative so that's pretty much it that's great well oh. welcome we're happy to have you here Thank Nate you. Yes. Um, Grace you have a, some tough shoes <laughs> to follow with Grace leaving but um, we're very excited to have you here and we look forward to the year ahead with you yeah definitely thank you very much and Grace 
you know, congratulations on your senior year. Thank you. I think earlier you were saying that you finished classes today, right? Yep. And uh, we look forward to seeing you graduate on Friday. We're so happy for you and excited for your future. Thank you. Great job, Grace. Um, for subcommittee updates, we have none at this time. And we can move on to unfinished business. Dr. Flanagan. Thank you, Madam Chair. We'll jump into the slide deck at this point. Um, so we'll go to the first slide. Some of you hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big vote last week. Um, and uh, just so thankful uh, to everyone in the community, so thankful to the efforts of the School Building Committee, the, the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, certainly this board here, as well as all those true advocates. There were tons of advocates for the school, uh, whether it was the Vote Yes Committee or just people behind the scenes, our entire middle school staff who gave up their time to, to really show the condition of that school and really advocate for the need. I think that the, the vote was, was overwhelming that supported it, and um, it, it's truly an exciting process uh, uh, time for us now and where we're going to go. What we're going to talk about is the school building committee meeting tomorrow night, and that's where we're really going to start to get into some of the details of what's next. So I just thought I'd kind of give you a, a little overview of where we are right now where we're going and the kind of the internal steps that we're taking. So we'll start with the feasibility study. Tomorrow night, the final bills will be presented from the feasibility study. And as you recall, if you, if you recall, in November of 2019, the town at a special town meeting voted to appropriate up to $950,000 for the feasibility study and schematic design. We're very happy to say that that came in $53,000 under budget. What typically happens is that money is then moved into the owner's soft contingency for the actual project itself. So it's not like money goes back to the town, it goes into the contingency part, and then at the end of the whole entire process, when we close things out, whatever's left over then is not borrowed and or not reimbursed at that time from MSBA. So tomorrow night, we absolutely close out the feasibility phase of the project. So that's where we are today. Mm -hmm. Go to the next slide. What's coming next is the project phase itself. So the first thing that needs to happen is we, need, we as a community need to receive paperwork from MSBA and the community needs to sign off and say that we agreed to borrowing up to $82.5 million for the project. Also tomorrow night, the school building committee will approve a uh, contract extension for JCJ, who is our architect, so that they can continue with the detailed design. Left Field, who is our project manager, so that they can continue. All, those, all that money and all, that, all those numbers were already budgeted as part of the process before. Uh, and then the next real big uh, step is securing a construction manager at risk. The construction manager at risk went out to bid probably a month and a half ago. Uh, the bids came, or nine different firms uh, were interested, showed interest, took packets. Seven firms submitted packets. We have a CMR procurement subcommittee. That subcommittee is made up of a representative from JCJ, a representative from Left Field, Matt Hansen, Colin Loisel, Mr. Messina, and Amy Pizerski as the community at large representative who has a construction background and who advocated for the CMR process. That subcommittee of, of the school building committee will vet and interview the seven CMR candidates and they will make a recommendation to the full school building committee as to which construction manager we should go with. We anticipate that all happening by the end of June. We also anticipate that JCJ and Left Field will work very hard in, over the next two to three weeks to really develop what the project scope is going to look like. Right now, it's, we heard this, we heard that. They're going to dial this in and tighten up the schedule uh, for us and have a presentation to the school building committee uh, in early June as to what the actual schedule is going to look like moving out. Um, they're also going to look at what it's going to take to get in front of the planning board, in front of the... Uh, Conservation Commission, all of the town boards where they have to go through the entire permitting process, all the while doing the detailed design on the side. So there's a lot of information to come, a lot of information that we don't have. As a school building committee, we haven't met for almost a month and a half. We, uh, I mean, the hay was in the barn at this point. We were waiting for two votes to happen. The two votes proved, uh, proved favorable for us, so we are going forward now. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's meeting to really get some more information about what comes next. We do know, we can go to the next slide. We do know that throughout the process, the very first step was demoing the existing gym, central office, and the catwalk that attaches to the middle school. Two years ago, when we have began having these conversations about what our best option was, 
we anticipated that that was going to be the first demo. So we knew that we had to really start thinking about where central office was going to go. We have a contingency plan for phys ed. We have space here at the high school. The kids will come over here for phys ed. But we didn't necessarily have dedicated space for central office. So working with uh, Mr. Ogden uh, extensively over the past several months as this thing came closer to reality, uh, we nailed down where central office is going to be. So central office will actually re relocate to the second floor here of Tingsboro High School. And that makes the most sense given the fact that construction is going to happen on this campus. So we all kind of need to be around and be available for that. To do that, to accommodate us, I'm looking at Mr. Ogden's list, um, we're going to have to relocate our Bridges classroom. Um, we're going to have to move our school resource officers. We're going to have to move move one related service provider, we have to move one related service testing room, and additionally, we had a spot reserved for the MSBA up in the back that they're surrendering or giving back to us because when construction starts, they'll actually have two trailers on site and they don't need a dedicated room in the school, so we're gonna take that back. So uh, there will be some movement within the school. Mr. Ogden assures me he has a solid plan. Um, he's already spoken with all the people who will be impacted. Um, so. Our plan is to really think about this summer packing up what we need to pack and moving into the high school so on the first day of school next year we are already functioning in this school. What I don't want to happen is for kids and staff to get into routines and then us to insert ourselves in January. So we want to start the year outright where we are here, staff knows we're here, and the operation just happens for the next three years. So we, have, we will have certainly a, a learning curve on what it's going to be like um, not being in our central office, but uh, we're confident that it's something that we can certainly manage. So th those are the next steps in terms of what's going on. Uh, closing out, start to think about the process and what we are internally are looking at right now. I'm happy to answer any questions I can about that. I don't, again, I don't have a lot of information, but uh, certainly I think you know, the building project will be a regular update at every school committee meeting moving forward. Are there any discussion points? The only thing that I would like to add and just remind people is that the, it came in at 897,000, of which half of that, I believe, the 54% um, reimbursement. So it's actually a really good number. So it didn't cost the town that 897? No. Right. No. No, both And we've already gotten a lot of that reimbursed from MSBA. Correct. So. Correct. <clears throat> so we're in a good spot. Big number. Great. Yes. Um, 9B, the math course offerings and pathways. Thank you, Madam Chair. So at the um, last meeting, I gave you a real quick primer that we were uh, almost at the finish line uh, of some work that's been going on for uh, basically four years at this point in time. So in your drive, you have a final uh, three-page update on the mathematics course <coughs> offerings and pathways. These two slides are just a real quick cheat sheet um, for you to take a look at and for the community to take a look at. Um, as you remember, three, we've done three years of work with Dr. Hillary Kreisenberg from the Mathematics Center at Lesley University to really look at instructional practices and programming at the elementary school. We're very proud of that work. We've seen some incredible gains coming out of the elementary school. We brought Dr. Kreisenberg up to work with the middle school this year. She's done some job embedded PD all through the school year. Um, she's actually gone out and hired another gentleman, Kit Golan, who has a lot of jobs coming out of New York State and doing a lot of good work um, with middle school and high school secondary mathematics. Um, she actually reached out to him and brought him on board because she's working with school districts like ours that are, have now benefited from the elementary work and are looking to maximize the skill sets and abilities of children at the middle and high school. So Kit is also on board with a lot of this work. So what we've been doing is we've been looking at our pathways and we've been looking at our programming at the middle school. So what this takes you through is the goal that we really wanted to talk about providing middle school students with much more equitable access to mathematics programming and not leveling and tracking them at such a young age. All of the research nationally which is attached to this document and that I kind of prefaced here a little bit supports what they're calling delayed acceleration as long as possible for children to peak at different points in their academic career to make sure students are ready for this. So we have been on leveled for two years with I think most people in this room know at the middle school because of COVID and what we recognized it has allowed kids to kind of um, peak in their own fashion and to get um, differentiated instruction and support in a pretty meaningful way um, in a little different manner than it happened before when we had leveled math in seventh and eighth grade. So we're proud of this work. Middle school staff is on board with this change at the middle school. 
to happen next year or to continue really after this year. Um, the shift now is then we have to work with the high school faculty on what our pathways will look like as we move forward. So we've met with the, with the high school faculty um, and the department head, Katie Rich, and Mr. Gogan will be coming in for a fifth year with our, that'll be our final year of the contract with Leslie, and he'll be coming in on all of our early release days and on some job embedded days. He'll be working with the high school to put together this new pathway so the kids will come out of eighth grade, everybody will go into Algebra one that freshman year, then everybody will go into Geometry in 10th grade, still at the CP and Honors level for credit purposes, but then the delayed acceleration happens in 11th grade, well then they'll jump into a, a CP Algebra two class or what's gonna be called a compressed Algebra one pre-calculus combo class. Algebra two. So, sorry, sorry, my bad, thank you. <laughs> algebra two, <laughs> I have really bad eyes right now. Um, algebra two and uh, and pre-calculus at, at the honors level, that will be a year-long course, very rigorous and robust. And then if you see the color coding, those students will have multiple pathways to go. A lot of the research talks about how by the time the kid finishes their sophomore year, they're much more in tune with themselves for college and career application. They have a better understanding of do I have that math science lean, do I have a liberal arts lean. It allows kids to peak a little later, to get their interest level a little higher in certain subject areas, and then really track up into some of those higher-end math classes. So we're still getting it. All of our students currently who want to take AP Calculus um, to that level, we do believe that the national data shows that you will actually see more kids going into a higher pathway over time with this new model. We're excited by it. It also closes the equity gap. We have a real obligation for some populations, female students, um, minority students, first-generation students, um, low-income families. We have a real dedication to certain populations of kids that the STEM opportunities have theoretically been closed off to in the past for a lot of reasons. This will help to level that playing field for students. Um, so proud of the work we've done so far um, and the bulk of the work now will be instructional practices at the middle school next year and at the high school it's going to be on redeveloping these courses. So we'll have a redesign of Algebra 1, a redesign of Geometry and a full design of that Algebra 2 pre-calculus class and that'll all happen next year. I'd just like to add if I may Dr. Brink, yep. I think this, is, this has been a focus in our district for the past five years. I mean, when, you, when we first started yeah. together, it was, yeah. it was about we need to fix elementary math. And we started at the elementary school. We've made a significant investment in mathematics, uh, partnering with Leslie University and Dr. Kreisberg. Uh, and this is absolutely the right course of action for us at this time. Um, it, it kind of was a trickle up effect, mm -hmm. which is usually different, right? We use it backward design, right. you talk about that. Right. We started AP Calc and you work off of that. Uh, but we really needed to start our elementary school. And the work that's happened down there uh, with our teachers and our dedication to a math coach at the elementary school, uh, has been outstanding, and, and we're starting to see and reap the benefits of it at TMS. We anticipate that push-up when we get to Tingsboro High School as well. So uh, it was a systemic, strategic approach, and uh, again, a significant investment on the district, but one that we think has been worth every single penny we've put into it. I just had a question on the grade 12 math. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we look at the calculus, um, the AP calculus, AB and BC, are these full year courses? Are they part year courses? They are fully. All of those AP classes will be full year classes. And that's, that's not an AB, you know, most people know that that's not a BBC combo. Those are two separate courses. Okay. Right. So that's just placed, it's placed that way on the, on the design. So how would one, <clears throat> AP Calc AB is a full year course, how would one then participate in BC? So, so we've, BC. We've run them opposite years some yeah, years. BC, right. uh, and I'm going back to my Don Champa right, days, BC right. essentially is four more chapters. Uh, and we've never essentially offered two separate courses. They run at the same time. So BC is AB at a more accelerated pace right. to okay. get to BC. So uh, it's not two distinctly different courses. Okay. It's just more content on the back end of that. Um, I did not take either of those in high school, uh, so I'm taking Don Champ as well for that. I think what's important to also know is students coming out of 10th grade into the, that 11th grade split, if you read all the way through the report, you'll see that there'll be a protocol in there for a student who's a REACH student. If they really want to challenge themselves, um, even though maybe some of the data doesn't necessarily show it and they just say, listen, I'm going to put my head down, I have the aptitude, I really want to do this, that pathway is there. And in the first try, those courses are going to start in a very similar curricular fashion. And then at the end of the first try, if I sit back and I go, oh, I really just, I guess you were right, I bit off a little more than I could chew here, that student can jump back down into a comfort level. On the opposite end of that, a student that started in that Algebra 2 can have, make the same decision if they're really killing it after first trimester uh, junior year, they can challenge up. 
So that's been difficult in the past because they haven't started in a similar fashion, mm -hmm. and then they're behind the eight ball going in another direction. Um, so we think that's kind of a nice opportunity for juniors who might be right on that split level. Either I'm not sure what my college career pathway is, and I want to feel this out, or I I'm ready. I'm finally ready to challenge myself. Please don't let my academic transcript from the past um, hold me back in the future. And I think 30,000 for view. We're, we're having kids who are entering their junior high school make a decision about whether they want AP Calc, not entering seventh grade. Thank you, yeah. I think yes. that's, that's yes. the, the message we need to get out yes. there, uh, where parents are essentially making decisions for kids at, in seventh grade, um, that you're going to be a STEM major or an engineer, yeah. uh, which is all well and good. They can still get there and do that, but the, kid will have more, the student will have more input uh, yeah. when that, they're that's junior. That's a great point. Yep. So I have a question. Um, the Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus is going to be in one year. Is there going to be enough time to do that? Because right now, um, Pre-Calculus is rumored to be the hardest class. And to have that in conjunction with Algebra 2, is that almost too much of a big of a, too big of a bite of the apple so for them to be handling in the course of one year? So I'm going to give you a layman's answer based on what the math professionals have told us. So the okay. consultants, the high school, and the middle school staff has talked a lot about this. Uh, the mathematical concepts in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus are very similar in a lot of ways. There's a lot of overlap. So that, that's going to be a complete redesign of what's going to be called a compressed course. So it won't be the A to Z Algebra 2 course, nor will it be the, the A to Z, Z pre-calculus course. It'll be a completely redesigned, compressed course based on the mass frameworks and standards. Almost think of like power standards and picking what absolutely has to be known, and we'll work with our 12th grade teachers who teach the other courses to make sure kids are ready for whichever level they so get So it will almost be like thematic? Like where yeah, it's the same yes, concepts, yes. and it's more of a thematic year where you're dealing yes. with these concepts throughout the course of the year yes. thematically. And that will be a year-long course where some of the other cl courses are two tri classes. And okay. if we're talking in terms of our current eighth graders, yeah. um, they'll be will they be slotting into this algebra one <coughs> CP or H next year? No, so our current eighth graders had um, the regular unleveled math, we had a small group of students who took a challenge algebra um, acceleration program for one trimester so that they can come into the model we're currently running. So our current seventh graders or rising eighth graders will be the first ones to go through this model, which is why the timing is great. So our high school faculty has an entire year to build this program with the help of the consultant during our professional development time and, and be ready for those kids an entire school year from now. Sure, and but there'll still be the pathway for the student, the, the current eighth graders to yes. continue on today's. Yes. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a gradual release yeah. over time taking care of that group of kids as okay. they go. Yes, thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, Dr. Branco, thank you for that presentation. That thank was you. great. Uh, moving on to new business, the Fiscal 23 Valley Collaborative Board Members Appointment. Uh, Yes, Madam Chair, so thank you. Uh, annually, uh, we have to appoint a member of this board or myself as a designee to the Valley Collaborative uh, Board of Directors. Um, for those of you who don't know or for those at home listening who don't, aren't one aware, Valley Collaborative is our regional special education collaborative. It consists of Chelmsford, Billerica, Tewksbury, North Middlesex, Drakeit, Groton, Dunstable, Neshoba Tech, Westford, and Tingsboro. Uh, we are a nine-member board. I will say that uh, since I've been on the board, all appointees have been sitting superintendents. Great. Um, I will seek a motion to approve the appointment of Dr. Flanagan to the Valley Collaborative Board of Directors for the fiscal 23 year. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stain? That carries 6 0 0. Congratulations, Dr. Flanagan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to finance, Mr. Messina. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, for signing of bills tonight, there were 13 warrants presented to the, co to the committee. I do have them all back signed. Um, in your drive is the list of warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts. Um, also, in uh, replace of a meeting on May 10th, uh, Mr. Mullen, as your single signer, came in and approved six bill warrants. Um, again, the list of numbers, accounts, and amounts are in your drive. Uh, for signing of payroll, since we last approved payroll, there have been three. The payroll of April 25th, May 9th, and May 23rd. Again, in the drive is the list uh, with the warrant number and the amounts. And one item under other, if I may, um, given that, that your next business meeting is not scheduled until late July, 
Um, I wanted to give the committee an opportunity to um, review the elementary school playground proposals and what we've done so far. Um, those proposals were due last Thursday. Um, we did have uh, three submittals, Ulti Play, Parks and Rec, Site Specifics, and O'Brien um, Playground Equipment. Um, on Thursday, uh, Colin Loisel, who's the town's chief procurement officer, myself, uh, Jake Swicker, who is the uh, town engineer, as well as Mr. Cimitelli and Mrs. Kavanaugh, <coughs> rated the non-price proposals. Um, UltiPlay was our highest selection. Um, we then opened the price proposals, and we were pleased to find out that UltiPlay was the lowest um, price in that group. So um, they came in uh, slightly under four hundred thousand um, dollars. We did have a contract prepared at town hall, and given that we don't have a meeting um, for another month, I would ask the committee to uh, have a motion to award the TES playground replacement to Alti Play Parks and Playgrounds out of Blackstone, Mass, for a base contract price of three hundred ninety-nine thousand six hundred fifty-one dollars and to authorize the chair to sign that contract. Madam Chair, I would happily make that motion. Very happy to second it. All right, is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? That carries six zero zero. Thank you for all that work, Mr. Messina. You're welcome. And just for next steps, we actually have a meeting scheduled next week with Altiplay to get the final design. Um, hopefully with the signed contract, he can start ordering the equipment and um, we will ex you know, do our best to ex expedite that project. Um, we do have a, a target no later than end of October um, based upon how the port in place rubber needs to go in, um, hoping we can either meet that or uh, do something a little earlier. So if I may, so that project will start over the summer possibly? Yes. For groundwork and... Yes, they can start demoing um, the playground equipment there and getting the site ready. Um, I think the, the biggest time concern will be the, the equipment delivery. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and I'd just like to acknowledge once more the uh, Capital Asset Committee for supporting this playground. It's, um, it's been a big need at the elementary school, and you know I'm really appreciative of all the work that went into it. I know um, Tony and Rob were on that committee as well as members of the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen, so i um, very appreciative of that work. I'm not going to cut off the last slide like I typically do, so it's actually planning. Thank you. Um, and that's probably me. We have put that in the agenda. So I just want to bring your attention to the upcoming uh, celebrations that are occurring in the district. Uh, as I, I mentioned, the school building committee tomorrow night first. That's not really a celebration, I, although I guess it could be a celebration. Yeah. We have a lot of reason to be happy. Um, we have high school graduation this Friday, fifth grade moving on. Uh, you can see that. I can't see it from this far. But on June 14th, June 15th, eighth grade moving on ceremony. We do have our school committee work session from six to nine with Dr. Ash on June 21st. And I just put these two dates in as placeholders. Um, this is typically what we've done in the past, one at the end of July, one at the end of August. So if we could do 7 p.m. meetings, um, I think that kind of makes sense to do one towards the end of the month. Um, if we need a single sign or come in, Mr. Messina can coordinate that with Mr. Mullen, hopefully. Um, and then we can talk about probably in July what our full schedule for next year will look like our full meeting schedule but uh, if we could put these in as placeholders like that would be uh, helpful and that's what we have for upcoming information I don't have the full schedule of school building committee but once I get that we'll incorporate that as well great madam chair do we have to make a motion to approve July 26th and August 23rd I think date? we should would you like to make, I that, will motion? make that motion is there a, a second? second is there any discussion yes. I will not be here on July 26th okay my husband's birthday and those days are sacred in our family <laughs> understandable so i will not be here <laughs> um, skipping out already huh look <laughs> all those in favor opposed abstain that carries six zero zero that's it Fine. we miss meetings from time to time it's okay i'm just that's why we have seven up, members well we do. put rob next to you <laughs> <laughs> for a real reason there uh, moving on to school committee discussion. So we do have two new members here tonight. Um, typically, we go around the room and, um, you know, anything that you want to share, discuss, um, feel free to do so. And so, Nate, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. You're first. 
Um, nothing at this time. Just thanks again <laughs> for the opportunity, and I'm looking forward to it. Great. Thank you. Grace? All right, so thank you to Ms. Fairbanks. I don't know if she watches these, but big thank you. So <laughs> thank you all for the opportunity to be on the school board meeting. I did learn a lot while I was here. And good luck to Nate. Thank you. <laughs> Steen? I'm going to wish Grace luck in all her future endeavors. Thank you. I'm going to welcome Danielle. It's going to be a lot of fun working with you over the next couple of years. And that's all. All right. Uh, again, thank, you know, it's been great having you here, Grace, and all the best to you in the future. Um, and welcome aboard, Nate. Um, and, you know, Danielle, obviously, congratulations. And, you know, it's going to be good having you on, on this board. Um, and nothing further. Dr. Branko? I just want to say thank you to the community for the overwhelming support for the middle school project. It's been a long time coming, years and years of hard work for a lot of people. Um, and so it's great to see it finally happen. Mr. Messina? I'm all set tonight. Thank you. Rob? Welcome, Nate. Thank you. Uh, I know it's a, it's a grueling process and a lot of work to get on here, but uh, it can sometimes be a lot of fun. It can, uh, uh, especially if you don't listen to certain members. <laughs> <laughs> um, Grace, thank you so very much for your work this past year. Um, you've been wonderful, um, upheld uh, the high standards of this position. Uh, and I wish you nothing but the best uh, going forward uh, in your school scholastic career and uh, and work it's at some point. Stay in school as long as possible. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so very much to the community for their uh, again overwhelming support uh, for this much needed uh, new building. Uh, I, I was, I was absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of support myself. Um, I was hopeful, uh, but seeing people come out and uh, work very hard uh, to get this project uh, approved uh, was, was just fantastic to see. Um, uh, you know, as Dr. Um, as Dr. Flanagan in uh, had, had stated several times, um, we only got one shot at this. Uh, and uh, our community understood that this time and, and gave us the support, so thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Daniela uh, to, for your first year here. Um, I, I want to wish you a lot of luck, uh, and uh, thank you again, Madam Chair, for stepping up for another year. Appreciate it greatly. Um, one thing I do want to say is that uh, I, I want to talk about how, I, you know, I, a few statements that I've heard in the community um, with, uh, with numbers slowly rising with COVID uh, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, some members have asked if uh, there will be a return of a mask mandate. Um, I, I know most of us are very, very hopeful <laughs> that we are able to end this year very quickly and not even have to consider that. Um, amen. Amen is right. Um, None of us here, I, I think, well, I'll speak for myself. I don't want to see a return of a mask mandate at all. Um, I, I would, however, uh, encourage those uh, family members, uh, staff, uh, students uh, to wear them if you feel it's necessary. Uh, there have been several occasions that I've felt it's necessary, either at work or in public, and, and I wear it. Uh, but uh, I think I. I think we're all hoping for a, uh, uh, to be able to finish up this year without that. Other than that, I have nothing else. And Thanks, Ryan. Thank you for putting up with my long-winded speeches. <laughs> we enjoy them. Ooh. Danielle? Um, Grace, good luck. Thank you. Um, as you graduate, and uh, college is awesome, and I'm so jealous that you get to do your college in the city, so good luck. Um, Nate, we're going to have to be newbies together next year, so yeah. we got this. It's okay. Um, and other than that, I just want to congratulate Becky on her uh, re-election as well and just thank everybody for being so encouraging. Um, this has been something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I just hope I can make the community proud. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'll echo a lot of the comments that have already been made, but welcome, Danielle. Congratulations, Becky. Congratulations on the election. Um, Nate, welcome. Thank you. Again, don't listen to the thing I say. Uh, Grace, congratulations. You're going to do awesome at Harvard. I'm going to love you. Thank you. Um, 
make us all proud as you already have. Dr. Branko, I believe this is your last meeting too, isn't it? Is. it? Yep. Thank you very much for everything you've done for us over um, the last six and a half years, I believe, right? So um, thank you for that. Thank you to the community for, again, uh, the middle school project, it's huge. A lot of people put a lot of hours into this. Um, Dr. Flan Flanagan, Dr. Branko, um, Joe Messina, you almost became a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> the entire staff, administration, left field, JCJ, um, the school building committee, the board of selectmen, the finance committee, the list goes on and on and on. This has been 11 years in the making. Um, and although the average person doesn't pay attention to it until it hits the ballot. There are hundreds and hundreds of hours that went into this project, and I thank you all for, for reading the mailers and digesting the information and making, in my opinion, the right decision for the children of Tingsboro Public Schools and the community as a whole. So uh, thank you for that. To the parents of the elementary school, there is a playground coming. <laughs> Um, so that's, we've waited a long time for that as well. Thank you, Mr. McMahon, for uh, being the recording secretary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and the last thing I'll say is to the seniors um, graduating, please remember your teachers from elementary school to high school, your custodians, your nurses, your um, resource officers. Thank them all on your way out. And um, there'll be a lot of graduation parties coming up. Be careful, be safe, be smart, um, but enjoy the next week. Have a blast. So that is it. That's I, the most I've ever said. I have nothing to add. I think everything's been covered. Welcome and thank you to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, Gonna let him go first next time. That was a great way to put it, Dr. Flanagan. Um, with that, we have no need for executive session, and so I'll seek a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying. That carries 600. We are adjourned.